boys and girls we are recording from Cambridge Ontario Canada uh, the weather is pretty nasty minus 3 I'm guessing 25 26 F and it's like wet snow well it's more like rain actually now I don't know why it's everything is melting but it's it's below freezing and today I wanted to talk about uh, a virus that seems to be going on in the trucking community. It's called the T O N U. Tonu. T O N U. And how do you know you get it? Usually your <laughs> usually your broker will tell you. Because you, you think that everything is cool, that you're a healthy individual and the load, the load is booked and you're doing fine. And then if you have a good relationship with the broker, he or she will call instead of an emailing and giving you the prognosis or diagnosis. So basically the load is canceled, you know and uh, as a little reward as a compensation they say that they will submit the truck ordered not used um, paperwork and the way it works is that as you might know so there's always th most of the time uh, when you are more on the lucky side there's three parties to a trucking transaction there's the shipper uh, then there's the broker freight broker and then there's a the trucker right so in a typical scenario the let's say the manufacturer or the factory um, doesn't want to deal with carriers directly because they might have too many loads or they just don't have time to you know look and, and post loads on the load board and then deal with truckers right uh, so they hire a freight broker and of course the freight broker makes a little bit of money typically anywhere between 12 and 200 percent but not more than that and then the broker hires a trucker right but what's funny is that and the, this seems uh, especially evident when there's too many trucks and not enough loads like now in winter february right and what happens is that shippers or customers who sometimes are big brokers you know like there's regular brokers and then there's what they call freight forwarders and the freight forwarder is like a big company that deals with you know air freight you know ship freight like ocean freight right and then uh, let's say they arrange a shipment of something from Europe to US right and then it has to go from US to Canada and these guys have no clue where to get trucks so they hire a trucking freight broker right so actually a freight broker is more of a specialized uh, kind of deal whereas a freight broker is you know probably it's a couple of notches up the ladder uh, but basically, yeah, when they don't have enough loads and too many trucks, they can cancel your load anytime they want. But for some reason, usually they get upset when truckers do it, you know. And this is the second load today that they did this to me where everything was booked. Um, I ordered permits, you know, I did, that's why I'm holding this measuring tape, because they wanted me, they were pushing me to order permits ASAP, even though, even though today is Tuesday, but the loading was scheduled for Thursday. And the guy said, why you cannot order it Monday night? And I said, well, it's already late. There's people in front of me, like I know the permit service company, you know, they are in central time, like the one I'm dealing with and the time was only like four o'clock my time so it's only three o'clock in iowa but they don't like if you send them something that they cannot just start working on it right away because there were there were people in front of you that send them you know like application for a permit right 
And I know from experience that if I send them something after like 4 o'clock, they never look at it until the next morning. But uh, this guy was basically grilling me why I cannot do it Monday. But when I went home, I, I did all the prep work, you know, I researched the routing, I, I put down the weights like approximately because the broker was swearing that everything is correct. But just to be on the safe side, because I was concerned, I was concerned about the height of this big machine I was supposed to pick up Thursday. It's like 91,000 pounds and they said the 12 feet tall. And, you know, my trailer load is 20 inches. So I don't want to be, you know, 14 feet tall because then in New York, New York State, specifically at 14, you need an escort. And the rate was not that good, you know, to begin with. It was like an okay rate, but nothing to write home about, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, but I stopped by, it's the same plant where I loaded in December. If you remember the big yellow machine I, I took to Florida. It was the same kind of a machine except it's bigger. Instead of 350, the model was 500. So it's much heavier, it's 90, 91,000 pounds, you know. But I went there in the morning in my car, I said, hey guys, you know, I'm picking up this machine on Thursday, can I just go and check the width and height? And the width was the same as they told me, but the height was a bit lower. The height was 11-11, 11, 11, 11 feet, 11 inches. And even one inch can make a difference, you know. So I decided to order permits for 13 feet, 10 inches. Because, you know, the trailer also, when with a super heavy weight, it goes down, right? So that's what I, I estimated would be 13, 10 should be okay and I only needed to go through two states New York and Connecticut because this machine was going 500 miles east to Connecticut pretty much not too far from New York City and I found a route where I don't cross through Massachusetts because that would be another you know like more money right so I I created a route where I would only go through New York at the bottom there oh and what is it like uh, US 17 you know uh, Binghamton, that kind of way, and then you just go right into Connecticut. So I just wanted to get two permits. And so everything done, I, I did that, I sent it to, to the broker and then emailed the, I mean, to the permit service company, then I emailed the broker saying permits ordered. And then I did uh, the bridge application, right? So when you're over 120,000 pounds and you're crossing from Ontario into US, you have to uh, apply for a crossing permit to go over the bridge and they also charge you money, right? So now the Peace Bridge is closed to all oversized loads until May 2019 and so you have to cross in uh, Niagara Falls which is called uh, Queenston. I always mix them up. I know people just call it Queenston slash Lewiston. I think Queenston it's Canadian side and Lewiston it's New York, but I may be mistaken. But anyway, so that bridge is called Queenston Lewiston and it's just north of the Peace Bridge that I, I used to use before. I really know that one. But anyway, so you have to do this, you have to do the application and so, you know, permits, routing, uh, and they push me, yeah, 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 go, 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 you know, I said, okay. Oh, and uh, when I was there, I see they're still working at this machine, and I asked the guy, I said, uh, are you guys going to be ready Thursday? And he says, we're not sure. <laughs> okay, and so I was really surprised when everything was done, and I'm sitting at Starbucks sipping coffee, you know, and just looking forward to finally making some money. And then my f I was really surprised when my phone rings, and I look at the screen, and I see that it's the name of the freight broker. And right away, like, my kind of, like, heart skipped a beat, you know, and I thought, because I know he's busy, he has, like, seven, he, this guy, actually, that I work with, he's, like, the manager of the freight brokerage company, so he has, like, seven people, he said he has seven brokers or agents working for him. So I know he's very busy, and, and here he is calling me instead of emailing me, right? That cannot be good. And he says, uh... Uh, the customer decided that they wanted a guaranteed 
delivery on Friday. And we talked about this with the broker before with this boss and he was asking me like what do I expect when do I expect to deliver and I said realistically even though I ordered permits I have no clue how long the New York will take it can take three days can take four days right because it, it is a pretty heavy load my gross would have been 150,500 pounds and surprisingly the bridge approved me you know um, right before his call I got an email from the Niagara Falls uh, Bridge Commission saying that my crossing was approved the only uh, restriction was I was supposed to drive across the bridge at five miles per hour <laughs> five miles per hour but they didn't say any escorts nothing lane blockage nothing just reduced speed over the bridge okay but it is so it is you see for them it's pretty heavy like if you if they wanted to drive at five miles per hour it's a serious load you know um, but yeah it's because my trail is so heavy you know like if this was Fontaine on the Fontaine trail I would have been instead of 150.5 I would have been 145 point no wait 144 yeah 144.5 you know 6,000 pounds heavier with this trail but anyway so they approved me everything is cool they give me 75,000 on the quad in the back so usually they are like the peace bridge usually limit limits me to 72,000 pounds even with 60 inch spacing these guys gave me 75 like I asked for 75 and they said approved just have to drive slow okay and then and then my phone rings and we're talking to this guy and he's also upset and the, because he lost money according to him because he says the customer uh, called him and said they found a carrier that can guarantee them delivery Friday and when we talked to the with the broker right before I said like realistically I'll probably be there Monday or Tuesday because even though it's 500 miles but it's extremely slow route you know there's a multiple highways you know how to it's very difficult to get through New York without tall highways but because this thing is so tall they would not allow me to go on tall highways and so I created the route you know it's like lots of twists and turns and so I know it would take like easy two days just driving you know and I still didn't have the permit right and so I told him I said realistically Monday choose and he says well that's fine because actually he says uh, they wanted their Monday and then he called me and he says yeah the customer changed his mind so the customer wants it they're guaranteed Friday and they said they found a carrier that guarantees them that and so they cancel my load and I asked this guy I said so does your customer realize that you already issued like a load confirmation and that the guy is doing the work and ordering permits he says yeah they know and that's one of the uh, symptoms you know when you have T-O-N-U virus is that when you get usually very angry very upset and you have sweat on your palms and you feel like killing somebody so that's a typical scenario if you're if you're a trucker or a broker if you're feeling these symptoms that means that you just contracted T-O-N-U truck ordered not used <laughs> But at least the guy says, he says, uh, the broker says, I told them that we already have the truck, the guy already ordered permits, and so we'll have to charge you, you know, the T-O-N-U fee. And then guy says, okay, no problem. And so this broker sends me the, looks like the same as a rate confirmation, except it's, it has that amount. I think it was like $300 US. Uh, but... I got lucky that I told this guy I have to get off the phone and call the, my permit service company ASAP and see if I can cancel cancel the permits without penalty and I called them and I said I'm sorry this is the second time in a row you know like you see like these guys when they do this stuff they inconvenience a lot of people first of all I was doing lots of work already right researching ordering permits you know working with numbers 
you know measuring you know thinking about about the load how to load um, I was just about to go to Home Depot get some more timbers for this load right I'm like in loading mood you know I'm walking around and I'm thinking about this because it's a big responsibility you know 90,000 pound load it's not like you hey go you know you have to it's like a fight you know like in a boxing ring it's a big thing right it's a lot of responsibility and then the broker right since I send them this the bridge was working the bridge was entering numbers in the computer to see if this load can pass or not so the bridge was working for free and then my permit service company of course was entering all these numbers into their applications they were working right and then this guy decides to cancel everything when everybody's working on this load not just me but everybody right the broker the broker and we signed the agreement right the broker's agreement then there was a rate confirmation and it's like really inconvenient when they do this and that's why in most cases you charge them the you charge them this fee like 200 bucks 300 bucks whatever right because it's just it's irresponsible and we were talking again to the broker I said I guarantee it that this load will not be there Friday you know like okay if you're pulling a flatbed or step deck or dry van I don't know of course that's not a problem to do 500 miles in one day but first of all they don't know if the machine will be ready on Thursday like I said I, I was there this morning and there's tools everywhere they're working of course it's only Tuesday now but still last time they were late so I guarantee that it will not be shipped on time and and secondly this is not a drive and a flatbed load you need permits right and then you need to go on all these little roads and then uh, Saturday 12 o'clock it's a curfew in New York so if you don't get out of New York State by 12 o'clock on Saturday you stuck you have to sit there and so I don't know I don't think it was the rate I don't think the rate was the issue because it was already very conservative you know it was okay but like I said nothing to write home about so I don't think they found anybody cheaper because it is a big load but what's funny is that they always use this excuse like they found somebody to to deliver quicker like in my previous load that was canceled on, under the same circumstances where I already had the the rate confirmation uh, but that one the loading was like Monday in a few days and this guy decided he wanted to load sooner uh, and I think they found somebody because that load disappeared from the load board so basically that's the thing like the 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 shipper basically the main customer who hires the broker uh, keeps looking and they have their own connections you know and they don't care if the rate confirmation was signed if the broker found a load if they know somebody uh, maybe they have some buddies over there you know that that, that hey uh, you know John you have a load oh well we gave it to a broker ah, don't worry about it I can do it for you like I'll, I'll give you a couple hundred bucks off all right you know but I just wanted to say so that's what happens uh, truck audit not used it's a normal situation except that uh, what this made the way this makes me feel as a trucker is that people have no respect for truckers and so next time when I'm booking a load I'm not gonna stop looking for loads until I'm loaded okay so I'm gonna be looking and booking loads I don't care two loads three loads you know like are you available yes I'm available until the load is physically on my deck I am available because this is what happens it's ridiculous you know and then when I'm loaded then I'm gonna call that guy and cancel you know and let him charge me truck what it not used but he cannot do that <laughs> well but because that's how they they treat truckers right so um, nothing is uh, set unless you actually load it you know and that's why of course it's a bit dangerous when you uh, when you want to do a deadhead you know like a long deadhead like 500 miles 1000 miles because imagine if I if I was loading somewhere far away and I'm driving right they would just give me the same 300 bucks you know 
So it's best to look for loads, you know, not too far from home. Uh, but at least track water not used, it's some kind of a protection because uh, remember that load I did where I went empty to uh, Minnesota and brought back that ugly drum mix? That guy actually had the audacity on the rate confirmation like there was nothing in the agreement when we signed the agreement because usually that's the first step right you sign the agreement uh, and the agreements between brokers and carriers are always shifted to protect the interests of the of the broker so you have to look through them just in case and I don't think there was anything in the agreement about this but on the rate confirmation in black and white this guy wrote Track audit not used will not be paid. <laughs> and I'm just about to go a thousand miles empty from Ontario to Minnesota, you know, and I'm thinking, like, what's to stop this guy? You know, I arrive there to pick up the machine and they tell me the machine is already shipped. And that's it. And this guy says he's not going to even pay track audit not used, you know. So that's always something to look for, you know, just it should be there. They should not say that because if they cancel the load and they don't tell you, you know, you should get reimbursed. And I just wanted to share this, like some of these, you know, some of my thoughts on this. So that's kind of like what's happening in the trucking industry. Like I said, when there's uh, too, not enough uh, loads and too many trucks. And so this is what happens. People cancel loads on you because they found somebody quicker or cheaper or something. And they don't care that you already have the rate confirmation and you're working and you're getting ready to get loaded. But there's nothing you can do about that except to keep your spirits up. Because every cloud has a silver lining and uh, when something bad happens, usually something good happens as well. Like in my case, uh, this... Well, it's hard to see, but... See that zoop? Hold on. So we're sitting in front of the soup, zoop, soup and salad, right? And these guys, I usually go here because they have a very good a very good too loud we should just turn it off so I usually go here because they they have a, a very nice selection of soups you know and these soups are like very thick like a real meal and my favorite is one called Indian lentil the problem is I don't know if it's good or bad but these guys they keep changing the the menu every day like so basically before I come here because I know which ones I like I just go to zoop.com and I'm pretty sure it's an American uh, it's American franchise it's come it's came came here from US so zoup.com or as we say in Canada zoup.com and you go there every day and they keep changing the the menu even online you know and you choose the location and you can see what soups they have and so I was very kind of like my the morale of the troops was down and I'm thinking okay I spent again half a day at uh, you know staring at my computer let me see what zoop.com has to offer and I, <laughs> I go online and I check the menu at this location in, on Hespler Road in Cambridge Ontario and I see at number one position it says Indian lentil yes and so that's what I mean like some sometimes when you know life is bad but then <laughs> you can get something in return so I think this is my reward uh, for not screaming too bad at the broker and of course there's nothing I can do about the, the shipper because the shipper is in Florida the company that makes these machines is in Florida uh, but I, I went in and I had a 12 ounce, 12 ounce little bowl of soup with some five grain bread. And then I said, just, you know, 
to stock up a little bit because I don't know when you guys are gonna offer it again I said I went back and I said give me another one this one the smaller side side size it's eight ounces and so I ate 20 ounces of this soup I still feel kind of like you know a bit slow motion when I walk you know but it's very nice very nice soup so so anyway and uh, now it's already what what do we have 27 minutes I'm looking at with my recording time okay this is just a beeping I thought it was somebody sending me a load or something uh, yeah so time now is uh, 427 so pretty much 4.30 Eastern Standard Time and the day is done right so but tomorrow is Wednesday so hopefully I did see a couple of loads uh, today that I was bidding on and sending emails you know but nothing happened so just I was so sure I was loading Thursday the day after tomorrow but you never know maybe they will change their mind uh, but that's what it is that's why I am at this point in time and like I said the most important part is keep your spirits up and don't scream too loud at people you know just you know don't burn all the bridges because if you start screaming at them too bad then you never know that load can uh, go back uh, you know become active and then they want to call you but they wait a second that guy he was saying such nasty things you know we don't want to work with them you know so basically never burn the bridges and um, never be too negative about these situations because stuff happens and you just move on move on and try to find a load and stay busy and look on the bright side of things from Cambridge Ontario I'm Captain Sergey Stay warm.